Hello, babies. Sorry for my brief absence, and thank you so much for 300 subscribers. I've been working on this Affinity deck recently. It's got me nine five O's so far. Let's check it out. Here's the list I've been playing with. It's pretty similar to the Mono Blue Affinity list I did a little bit ago, but it has a few important changes, so let's get into the deck tech. Starting off, of course, with our draw spells, we have Four Thought Monitor and Four Thought Casts. Having a bunch of random draw and dig in our deck lets us turn through our deck really quickly, find our hate pieces in game two and three, and it also helps us recover really well against interaction and snowball out of control if we're playing proactively. We have 12 free or pseudo-free cards to help us get our affinity started off with four Ornithopter, four Midnight, and four Frogmite. They're good at gumming up the board. They are decent attackers against control decks because it's hard for them to deal with all of them, and they're really good at carrying equipment. Our six Chonky Boys are four Sojourner's Companion and four Mirror Enforcer. Sojourner's Companion is a little bit better because it has artifact land cycling, and that does come up if you need a third mana to start activating Urza Saga or if you need to find blue mana, but for the most part, they're pretty much the same. Starting off our non-creature slash utility artifacts, we have two copies of Welding Jar, which is really nice because it's free for affinity and also can protect our more important artifacts from removal. We have four copies of Springleaf Drum, which is ramp slash blue fixing for our deck and also helps us have more of the explosive starts that we could possibly have. And we have two copies of Relic of Progenitus because I found having one is definitely necessary for Urza Saga and having two is even more nice because of the amount of graveyard decks running around and because turning off opponent's delirium can stop them from removing your chunky boys. We have one copy of Aether Spellbomb, which is a decent way of unsummoning to interact with our opponent's creatures, but it's even better when we use it to pick up our own Thought Monitor and draw two cards again. We have one copy of Ginger Brute, which I include in the utility artifacts instead of the creatures because I find it more useful to be getting it from Urza Saga than playing it normally, because having a surprise, hasty, unblockable guy to equip a cranial plating to can just end a game really easily. And we have one copy of Shadow Spear, of course, because it's just one of the better equipments that's been printed in Magic in general. Having both Trample and Lifelink means that it's both good when you're ahead and it's good when you're recovering from your opponent's fast start. We have four copies of Cranial Plating because they can close out the game very, very quickly and they have a double black to re-equip ability which can cheese our way through some instant speed interaction like Solitude or Unholy Heat. And we have one copy of Nettle Cyst because Nettle Cyst is like a Urza Saga construct almost since it costs three mana to put into play. It can close the game out relatively quickly, but being three mana makes it more expensive than most of the other things in our deck, so it feels a little clunky sometimes. Speaking of Urza's Saga, we have four copies of that, of course. Card's incredibly busted, it lets us play a weird toolboxy deck occasionally, and we're probably the best modern deck currently at taking advantage of the second ability because our constructs are going to be larger than pretty much anybody else's at any point. We have four copies of Darksteel Citadel and three copies of Treasure Vault. For our tapped artifact lands, we have four copies of Misfault Bridge and two copies of Silver Bluff Bridge. Misfault Bridge, of course, fixes our blue mana, but can also be used for cranial plating. And Silver Bluff Bridge, we can't actually use the red mana for anything, but occasionally people will play as if we have Galf Blast in our hand and be careful about getting their life total below four, so that's nice to have. And we've got a single basic island, because although Path Taxile is not around anymore, Besage is a real pain in the ass. In our sideboard, we have two copies of Tormod's Crypt for graveyard decks, one copy of Grafdigger's Cage for graveyard decks and for creature decks like Yogmoth Combo, and we have one copy of Pithing Needle for Planeswalkers, Yogmoth Combo, whatever else you think you can Pithing Needle. We have three copies of Damping Sphere for Amulet, Tron, and Stormstyle Combo decks, two copies of Hercules Recall for other artifact decks, and one copy of Curse Totem because literally only Ginger Brute is affected by it in our deck and it's really good against most creature combo decks. We have four copies of Metallic Rebuke because it's really versatile since we can bring it in against combo, control, and Yorion style value decks. And we have one copy of Edge Champion because it's a really good way to close out the game against slower decks. And that's the deck. It's a super fun and relatively cheap competitive modern deck, and let's get into the league. All right, round one of Affinity in Modern. We lost the die roll. We don't have blue yet. We could get it with Urza's Saga. We don't have Springleaf Drum, we would really like to have it in this hand. But I think it's keepable, it's got a, a decent amount of power in it, so let's keep. Our opponent Mulligan to six. Opponent Mulligan's to five. You can keep going as far as you want, opponent. They play Wooded Foothills Fetch. Blood Crypt. Thought sees. Okay. So it could be. 
could be Jund based on the lands that we've seen so far. Could also just be like black green or not black green, uh, black red playing wooded foothills just as an extra fetch possibly. But probably Jund. Ooh, Springleaf Drum was an excellent draw there. Let's play Saga, Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, Ginger Brute. Get in with the Brute. Might as well play Mimnite out, pass the turn. This way they don't get to Inquisition anything in case they have one of those. They do play Stomping Ground, so it is. Looks like just a New Age Jund deck with DRC and probably Ragavan and whatnot. Unholy Heat's Ginger Brute. They don't like the Gingerbread Man. They get to Surveil. They put... They keep it on top. One card left in our opponent's hand. We draw another Urza Saga. Which is probably just going to be really strong against them. Play Treasure Vault. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We can't play Sojourner's Companion this turn. But what we can do is get in with Memnite. Our opponent has done a ton of damage to themselves. <laughs> They're down to 11. Opponent plays Ren and Six. They can ping our Memnite with that. I assume that's what they're going to do. They might pick up a land, I guess, but they put Besaidu into the graveyard. They pick up Wooded Foothills instead of Besaidu. That's nice to see. <laughs> I doubt our opponent is playing Blood Moon, but I recently got to play against uh, Saffron Olive in a Boomer Jund video that he did. And in game one, he ran and six, ran and six, besaged me out of the game, and it was very, very sad. <laughs> Our opponent does not quite have delirium, so they're not forced to attack yet. We drew another Sojourner's Companion. That's a pretty good top deck. We don't really need to get blue mana here, so probably just getting Shadow Spears correct instead. Uh, we could get Relic, but I'm not that scared of their graveyard, really. Uh, I think we just need to be on the beatdown, especially since we're about to play a couple companions and then have a couple more constructs over the course of this game. So let's get Shadow Spear. Play Sojourner's Companion. Play other Sojourner's Companion. Play Urza's Saga. Go to combat. <laughs> All at our opponent's face. If they want to pick up Besaidu with Ren and Six, they are welcome to. I don't think essentially Doomblading something a few times in a row is going to be enough. Opponent gets a snow covered mountain. Unholy Heat's Ornithopter. Okie dokie. Does that turn on DRC? It'll be based on the Surveil. It does. They ditch a Tarmogoyf. They have no cards in hand. So they're going to be able to eat Mimnite with DRC, I guess. But if they do that, they take 8. Wow. Alright. So they're going to 2. Literally all of our creatures are lethal. I don't know what they could possibly top deck to get them out of this because they have to attack with DRC now. Yeah, so they're forced to attack with DRC. They can pick up the Seiju. It doesn't matter because they have Delirium. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right. What do we bring in against New Age Jund? Pithing Needle is probably correct. Etch Champion is probably correct. So I cut Nettle Cyst because I'm bringing in Etch Champion. I cut... I don't really like Mem Knights that much in matchups where... Renin Six is a thing. 
I doubt that they're going to have Blood Moon, so I don't really think bringing in Metallic Rebu Rebuke is correct. It's not as good against Alpine Moon since they can play it pretty easily. Let's see. Maybe some amount of Tormod's Crypts come in. I don't really want to cut on Mirror Enforcer because it's a pretty good beat stick against them. Let's bring in one Tormod's Crypt, cut another Memnite. Don't want to go all the way down on Memnite, but I don't want to rely on it too bad either because they're going to be able to kill it pretty easy with Renin 6, and they're more than likely going to be playing like Engineered Explosives, and I don't want Zero to be too good for them. Not capable. Let's mulligan. This one has a land and a springleaf drum at least. The drum doesn't get turned on very quickly. If we top deck a land, we can cycle Sojourners into another land. I don't really want to mulligan that much against Jund as another thing. Uh, I think I'll keep this. I think I want to keep these three and Thoughtcast for sure. These other ones I'm sort of unsure about. Uh, cranial plating would be a good payoff, but it costs the most mana out of the things in our hand, so I think that's what I'm going to mulligan away. Let's keep ditch cranial plating. Yeah, this hand could definitely go a couple different ways. Opponent plays Alpine Moon, we don't have an Urza Saga. Hopefully we don't draw one particularly soon. We draw a Dark Steel Citadel. Beautiful. All right. I think I want to go ahead and needle Ren and Six, so that if they have one in their hand and they were planning to play it next turn, they don't get an extra land drop off of it. Pound of plays. Overgrown Tomb tapped. We draw Mistfall Bridge. Let's go. Springleaf draw. Misfall Bridge. Pass. Alright, next turn, ideally, we can start doing things. They didn't have a Thought Seize for us last turn, so it makes... Well, they might now, since they have... Well, well still no Hand Disruption. That's kind of impressive. Let's Thought Cast. We drew Relic and another Cranial Plating. Play Dark Steel Citadel. Play Relic... Play Aether Spell Bomb, play Sojourner's Companion. Pass the turn. Alright, we can wallop them possibly with the Sojourner's Companion plus Cranial Plating. We can protect Sojourner's Companion with our Aether Spell Bomb. Let's let them surveil first. Hopefully they miss a land drop here since they missed one last turn. They kept whatever it was on top. Let's eat their Terminate. Keep them off of Delirium and off of Tarmogoyf being larger since we don't have any instants in our deck. We drew another Sojourner's. Play Cranial Plating. Play Sojourner's Companion. Play Sojourner's Companion. Play the other Cranial Plating. I doubt I'm popping Relic here, so I might as well just get it into play. And I can threaten them with an attack for about a million next turn. Kind of plays a land. Opponent. Does not attack. I should have relicked myself there. I didn't think to, though. We drew another Sojourner's Companion. Not bad. Uh, do I just... I think I go ahead and play it out because I think it's more likely that they have Cole against Command than Maelstrom Pulse, since Maelstrom Pulse is kind of not in vogue right now. So I can put a Cranial Plating on each of these, and I have double black to where I can reassign whichever one gets blocked, so they have to have a, an appropriate removal spell for a Sojourner's Companion, and also let, let their uh, DRC get ran over. Otherwise they just take lethal here. Reassign. See if they have removal. Unholy Heat? Are they going to go for the double Unholy Heat? 
or the unholy heat bolt. Let's exhale your Mishra's bobble. Three cards in our opponent's hand. Second unholy heat. <laughs> Opponent surveils, so they're not going to die here. They ditch wooded foothills. One of our companions dies, their DRC dies, they have two cards in hand. We have Mega Lethal on board. Opponent plays a Goyf. Opponent plays a Fury. That can kill a companion. We draw another cranial plating. Not really what we wanted here. Our opponent's out of cards in hand. Let's go ahead and pop Relic. Springleaf Drum. Let's force them to chump block with Tarmogoyf. And let's see if they draw another chump blocker or a removal spell off the top. Bona concedes. Very, very clean match there against Jund. Which is the way it should be, frankly. And I'll see you in the next one. Alright, round two of Affinity. We won the die roll this time. We got a Saga. We have... A couple big boys, one of them could get cashed in for an artifact land if we don't draw one to activate Saga with. I think this is capable. I'd like to draw a Springleaf Drum as usual, but we will see. Do I just dump my hand and hope that they're not a Fury deck? Because I can play one, two, three, and then I have four artifacts. Next turn I can't quite play Sojourner or Mirror Enforcer yet, but I'm impervious to Inquisition if I do that. Eh, let's go for it. Opponent plays a Forest. Plays an Amulet. Oh god. Alright, well they're not a Fury deck, so that part worked out. This is probably going to be a bit of a rough matchup. Let's play Urza's Saga. Planning to cycle Sojourner's Companion at the end of our opponent's turn here. Attack for three. See if we're going to die. Alright, they didn't play a second amulet, so we have a chance. <laughs> Pana plays Azusa. Alright, still in danger. I'm gonna go ahead and yield to these. We certainly have more of a chance game two and three after we sideboard pretty heavily against Amulet. Game one, it's possible that they keep a poor hand or they stumble and we're able to kill them on like turn four or something. The issue is that they went on turn three so consistently. And it's hard to uh, it's hard to deal with because they have both a big trampoly dude that they attack in with, and they have enough Valakut triggers generally that they have an Urza Saga. Okay, they have enough Valakut triggers generally that uh, they're able to get rid of either the board that you were planning to block with or the rest of your life total after they hit you. Drew another Sojourner's Companion. Our Saga ticks up. If we make a boy with Saga, we have six artifacts, which isn't a ton. We can't play Mirror Enforcer or Sojourners yet. I think we just gotta pass. Because realistically playing these guys still isn't as good as possibly just making boys. Let's see if we get lucky and they don't have... Okay, they do have a Valakut, so they might be able to start getting triggers with that. 
They might not have Titan. Okay, they have Titan. <laughs> Fuck. And they have Dryad already. They have a way to give it haste already. One, two, three, four, five, six. Although they might have to. No, they have Boros Garrison. Okay, well, Jesus Christ. Alright, well, I'll let them kill us at least. They kill our Frogmite. Yup, yup. Make a bunch of mana. Yeah, so what they can do, they can just grab... They already have a Slayer Stronghold, and they have one white man already, so they can just grab Valakuts and give their guy haste and get more lands, so let's just concede. No reason to wait around for that one. <sighs> Alright. So, sideboard against Amulet. We bring in all the Metallic Rebukes. We bring in... Okay, don't want them over there. Bring in all the Metallic Rebukes, bring in all the Damping Spheres. And bring in Pithing Needle. And we cut, Thought Cast, Thought Cast, Thought Cast. Cut. Relic, Relic. Cut. Probably Nettle Cyst, Mirror Enforcer, Mirror Enforcer? I think that's fine. Our main way of winning this matchup uh, post board is getting some hate cards into play, specifically Damping Sphere, because it makes them a lot less able to have the explosive combo turns. They can still have combo turns because of Valakut. They just they just behave like a Titan Shift deck after that. We don't have any hate cards. We don't have any. Counter spells. We got a mulligan this, I think. Ugh. Opponent kept seven. If we happen to draw a damping sphere or a counter spell, this hand could be good. But we still don't have one. Let's go further. All right, we have Damping Sphere. We have Urza's Saga. We get blown out really hard by Force of Vigor because both of our lands can get hit and of course Damping Sphere can get hit. Which of these do I want is the question. I guess I keep Thought Cast since Thought Monitor is a little bit harder to get to. And between Pithing Needle and Thought Cast. I actually might just keep Pithing Needle instead of either of these two because both of these take a little while and Pithing Needle can protect us from Beseju removing Damping Sphere. So let's keep. Get rid of the blue cards. Which doesn't feel good, but it's happening. Alright, Treasure Vault. Pithing Needle. See if we get blown out by a Force of Vigor on turn one. Besaju who shelters all. That's the right Besaju, right? Okay, I'm gonna look it up real fast. <laughs> or is it Besaju who endures? I don't want to pick the wrong one, that would be humiliating. Yeah, Besaju Who Endures is the right one. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't pick Who Shelters All. That card does not matter in this matchup. And Pithy Needling it doesn't do anything. Alright, they didn't Force a Vigor. I think they would have Force a Vigor if they could have. Just to get us off of Treasure Vault there. Opponent bounces their forest. This player is a Saga. Play Damping Sphere. Pass the turn.
Saga is probably going to fetch for Welding Jar if it gets that far. And we should be able to, to get at least one construct off of it, depending on if we draw land here, we might be able to get two. We draw. We go to upkeep. Yeah, there's the Force of Vigor. Well, that is bad news. The Exile and Arboreal Grazer, so not a card that matters. Let's go ahead and land cycle. Get a Misfall Bridge. Maybe we, if they don't kill us next turn, since they don't have Amulet yet, we can use this Metallic Rebuke that we top decked. I find that the best way to beat Amulet uh, game two is either by hating them with Damping Sphere. Okay, they might kill us here since they have Amulet now. Uh, or by playing a very well-timed Metallic Rebuke and getting them to die to a Summoner's Pact. They play Dryad. All right, that means that they probably shouldn't have enough land drops this turn to kill us. They might play Azusa though, and things could change. I guess we'll see. But if they Summoner's Pact for Titan, and don't have the lands to pay for Pact. I think that's our route to victory. Alright, let's play an island. Play... Cranial Plating. Pass the turn. We'd like to draw... A Thought Cast Effect, I think, so we can try to get back in this. Drawing a Damping Sphere would be nice too, but we need to clock on our opponent as well. And we don't have either of those at the moment. We just have a very silly looking cranial plating without any creatures to equip to. Alright, that's land drop number one. If they use both of their land drops and then try to play Titan and we counter it, that would be good. Especially if they packed first, because then I think they're dead. Unless they have another Arboreal Grazer. All right, they're definitely going for a Titan. Oh, they might be going for, yeah, Cultivator Colossus. Fuck that. No thank you. We draw, Shadow Spear does nothing, pass the turn. All right, back in the danger zone we go. If our opponent has another payoff, we're dead. <sighs> Amulet. Amulet. Why do they keep letting you do this to modern? <laughs> what do you guys think? I know that... Okay, there's another Cultivator Colossus. We're dead as shit, most likely. Um... I know that a handful of people I know don't like the Amulet... Well, that only triggered once. That's... Kind of hilarious. Um, a lot of people don't think that Primeval Titan should be in the modern format because it keeps causing cards to get banned. I'm kind of neutral on it. I don't play against it enough, I feel like, to have an informed opinion. Alright, we're not actually dead this turn, which is ridiculous. I feel like I've died every single time I've seen Cultivated Colossus come down. We draw Aether Spellbomb, which I guess could help defend us. We definitely don't want to bounce Colossus with it. I think I just have to bounce Dryad now. Yeah, I think I have to do it now. They could still just have enough mana to kill us because of the double amulet, but... It gets them down a little bit, I guess. Maybe I mulliganed too aggressively. I did wind up finding the cards I wanted, but they were able to blow us out with the Force of Vigor after a couple turns. And that wasn't very nice of them. 
They have double Dryad, so they have a shit ton of land drops. Do they have a prime time? They have a Turn Timber Symbiosis, so it's likely that they have a prime time. They have an Azusa. Wow. All right. I can't believe we're still technically here. Let's see if we draw anything good. Ornithopter. That's something to put Cranial Plating and Shadow Spear onto, at least. So it's better than another land. Maybe our opponent will continue to stumble. I guess we can hope. They have five land drops this turn <laughs> with double amulet, so they have as much mana as they could possibly need for anything. Okay, there's a prime time. I'm going to scoop. I mean, that game didn't go great, but it went way longer than it should have. Let's concede. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. All right, round three with affinity. We won the die roll. We are 1-1 one one currently. We won 2-0 against Jund, and, and then we got ourselves 2-0'd right afterward by Amulet. We'll keep this hand. It's reasonable. We get to go turn 1, Darksteel Citadel, either Relic or Aether Spellbomb, turn 2, Urza Saga, possibly make some boys, possibly get blue mana with it for Thought Monitor. So let's keep Go Darksteel Citadel, Relic. I'll just pass instead of running out Ornithopter. See what our opponent is up to. Brushland. Last time I saw Brushland, it was Hardened Scales, and that's what it looks like this is. Yep. Okay, Hardened Scales, Hardened Scales. <laughs> game 2 and 3 were a bit stronger against them, but it can go either way in game 1, I've, in my experience at least. We're on the play, and that helps a lot for sure. Let's play Ginger Brood out. Play Aether Spellbomb. Go ahead and go to combat for the one. Pass the turn. Hardened Scales is very hand dependent how well they can do, even more so than normal aggro slash combo decks, I think. It's lucky that we got the early Urza Saga against them. Alright, so they're going with an Ancient Stirrings. How much does Relic matter against them? Possibly not at all. I don't know if they get things back from the graveyard anymore, now that they don't have Loris in their deck. Opponent grabs a Walking Ballista. I wonder how popular Scales is going to be. It's definitely a decent argument for me to be playing a Pithing Needle in my main deck in the spot of like one of the Relics or something. Because if I could Pithing Needle Walking Ballista, that would be very nice. Let's play Treasure Vault, play Frogmite. They're not going to block this, most likely. So let's just go in for one with Ginger Brute. They might just Welding Jar their Esper Sentinel. That's fine. Compared to getting rid of their creatures already in play, I think it's much more important to... I think it's much more important than Ginger Brute, especially since Ginger Brute dies to a single Ballista activation. So next turn... So we're going to make a Construct, and then next turn we have the choice of either... Either make a construct, get Shadow Spear, and don't do anything with Shadow Spear. 
make a construct, get Springleaf Drum, draw cards with Thought Monitor, or don't make a construct, get Shadow Spear, equip Shadow Spear. I don't think that there's a line where I uh, don't make a construct and then get drum get a drum for Thought Monitor. I don't think that makes much sense. Put a place a hanger back walker. Shadow Spear's looking better and better. Bouncing Hangerback would also be really good, actually. Let's see what we draw. Draw Sojourner's Companion. Alright, I think I know what the plan is. Our opponent does not have a board currently. Let's make another boy. Let's go... Get Springleaf Drum. Play Sojourner's Companion. Unsummon your Hangerback Walker. Get in for 11. Oh, Ozolith triggers off of Unsummons. That's interesting. That's fine, though. I don't think I care that much about it. Opponents at 6. So not only do they have to block both of the big constructs, but they have to block at least one of Sojourner's Companion plus Frogmite too, or remove all these creatures. And I don't think they have the ability to do that from the board that they have currently. Because Hardened Scales kind of has to have a couple setup turns where they get a board in play, generally, unless they just have a bunch of mana, which they don't right now. Alright, cool. Cool, cool. So we bring in Pithing Needle for sure, Curse Totem for sure. I'm glad that I brought Curse Totem back for this matchup. And then I consider these blue cards. Hercules Recall, I mean, they're an artifact deck, so Hercules Recall is not bad. I've had situations against them where it wasn't great, but I still think it's worth bringing in. I think we cut... I don't know if Metallic Rebuke is right to bring in or not. It might be. Like, it might be right to bring in, like, two and cut a couple Thought Casts. Let's cut Relics, because I really don't think they get things back from their graveyard. They might prove us wrong, though. I like Shadow Spear. I like Aether Spellbomb. I don't know how I feel about Nettle Cyst yet. Let's, couple, let's cut a couple Thought Casts. Yeah, and let's bring in two Metallic Rebukes and cut two Mirror Enforcers, since they're a bit more of the stumbly boys out of our deck. Try it like that. That way we're not cutting too much pressure, and I think Nettle Cyst is fine against them because it carries Shadow Spear really well, and it's hard for them to kill it with Walking Ballista. Wow, this hand's slow. Uh, we got a mulligan this hand. <laughs> this hand would... Probably be nuts against like a random mid range deck, but. Opponent mulligans to six as well. That makes me feel a little bit better about it at least. Uh, we have a Metallic Rebuke and we have a Thought Monitor. I think it's worth keeping this. It's not incredibly fast, but if we draw blue mana, we're in a decent spot, and I think we just get rid of a Frogmite and keep Nettle Cyst instead because Frogmite is not that impactful on the board unless it's in large numbers, which this one will not be, at least anytime soon. We draw Memnite, okay. Play Darksteel Citadel. Uh, I'll just pass. Well... Yeah, I'll just pass. They could have Natural State or something, and I don't want them to use all their mana in that case. They have an Ink Moth Nexus, that's spooky. They have an Arcbound Ravager, that's also spooky. I'd like to draw a Pithy Needle for at least one of these sometime soon. Instead we draw a Metallic Rebuke, not what I wanted. Memnite, Frogmite, pass the turn. Alright, we have a lot of blue cards and no blue mana, which is not the way we want it to be.
opponent taps a land and untaps a land. They're thinking about what they want to do. They untap a land again. They tap a land again. They prismatic end our Memnite. Okay. I mean, I understand why they didn't prismatic end Frogmite, I suppose. They play Walking Ballista? Okay. And they pass. Alright. We draw Urza's Saga, which is a little on the late side. Do I get in with Frogmite, or do I just leave it back? I guess I get in. They're pretty likely to be able to remove it if I just leave it back. Play Nettle Cyst. Alright, let's see if we die. They have Arcbound Ravager and Ink Moth Nexus, so definitely possible. They don't have Hardened Scales yet. Knock on wood. And their deck is much scarier with their namesake card, of course. Alright, they have one card left in their hand. They played a brush land. We have a 5-5 five, five on defense. They cannot prismatic end our germ, at least with the one that they already used on our Memnite, so that's nice. They put a counter on Walking Ballista. And pass. Okay. So they still have an unknown card. We draw a Mistfall Bridge, so that gives us blue mana for next turn. We're just going to spend this turn activating Urza Saga, it looks like. Let's go to combat. Attack with both the boys. Go ahead and make a construct so we get in for one extra damage. Opponents at nine. They have two cards in hand. One of them wasn't useful last turn, at least compared to activating Walking Ballista. So essentially they have one draw at finding... Okay, they found a Prismatic End for the Construct token. Is your other card useful? It is not as it is a land. Okay. So they must have had a, a land heavy hand. I bet the Razor Verge Thicket was the other card. And they concede! Okay, sweet! That went better than I imagined it would. Uh, they definitely had... Like, they only... Let's see, they drew nine cards. They only had four spells. We definitely just ran hot that game. Or they ran poorly. We didn't... I mean, I guess we didn't run particularly hot since we had all these blue cards stuck in our hand, but either way, pretty happy with that. Let's get into the next one. All right, round four with Affinity and Modern. We've got double Urza Saga in this hand, so I mean, bare minimum, it's decent, right? Opponents on the play. I'm going to keep this. Depending on what we see out of our opponent's turn one, we're either going to go Misfault Bridge go on turn one, or we might go Urza Saga, Springleaf Drum, and then have like, Mem Knight to activate it. Uh, we could also go Treasure Vault, Springleaf Drum, I guess. If we're afraid of them having Spreading Seas, because then we can play Urza Saga turn two and Nettle Cyst on turn two, so it's kind of like we activated a Saga. Let's keep and see what happens. Bloodstained Mire. We drew Relic. All right. That's not a ton of information. They could disrupt us by looking at our hand and they could also disrupt us by killing a creature, both of which would be very annoying. Since we have two Urza Sagas, uh, I think I might just run it out. And we'll see what happens. I could go Memnite Relic this turn, and that could help me keep their graveyard under control, assuming that they are a DRC deck, but it's also likely when DRC style, uh, or I guess Rakdos decks in general, just pass on turn one that they have either Bolt or Fatal Push and can start 
killing things immediately, and I don't want to turn their mana on if I have the option. Alright, Saga ticks up. We draw Thought Cast, that's pretty good. Treasure Vault, Mem Knight. Alright, now our Saga is on. And I think we're just going to keep making endless XX creatures until our opponent dies between the Saga, the Saga, and the Nettle Cyst. And that's just the plan now. What do we want to get with our Urza Saga trigger, I wonder? Opponent plays a seasoned Pyromancer. Makes me lean towards Shadow Spear. I guess the other one could get Shadow Spear too, though. Hit us for three, we can't block it. It has Shadow after all. Alright. I think I might get Springleaf Drum so I can play Thoughtcast. <laughs> Actually, we drew another Springleaf Drum, so now we just don't even need to do that. Alright. That became easier. Let's get Shadow Spear. Play Urza Saga. Play Springleaf Drum. Play Thoughtcast. Play Sojourner's Companion. Attack for 8. Opponent chum blocks it like a nerd. Let's see what they have. K Command could be a decent way that they can get rid of Shadow Spear here. That's K Command is a possible reason that we would want. Okay, opponent cast our thought cast, cashing in their Doughty Voidwalker. Probably means they don't have the action they need. They thought they thought sees us. That's fine. We have multiple scary cards in our hand, both cranial plating and nettle cyst. Opponent takes cranial plating. That's fine. Plays a den of the bugbear, plays a very late ragavan. Saga ticks up. Let's go. Misfault Bridge. So I could Shadow Spear on a construct. There's a decent chance they have Fatal Push. I could, but also if I Shadow Spear on a construct, I can't make a Saga token anymore. So I think it's better to just play Relic here and then play Mem Knight and then attack with these boys. Exile a card from your graveyard. Combat. Attack with the team. Opponent has a push. I always like when I make a cold shot like that. It's very satisfying. Opponent lets the 4 through instead of double blocking it. Fine by me. I kind of thought they were going to block with Seasoned Pyromancer this turn so they could possibly get it back next turn with another land. Alright, opponent concedes. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly the type of matchup that we wanted to see with the hand that we kept. Game 1, it is really hard for mid-range decks to deal with Urza Saga. It pretty much just wins the game by itself. Game two, it gets a bit more complicated because they're probably going to have some combination of Blood Moon or Alpine Moon. Let's get rid of Nettle Cyst, bring in Etch Champion. <laughs> Let's. I think we want Pithing Needle. And Tormod's Crypt might be fine. They got to be playing Death, uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Right? Like they got to. We'll see what we take out for it. I don't think I want both of them since they're not like a graveyard combo deck. But we're definitely keeping the relics. We're definitely keeping Shadow Spear. We're definitely keeping Welding Jar. Do we just cut down on Mirror Enforcer? And I don't think I like cutting Ginger Brute, so I think I just cut both the Mirror Enforcers. Try it like that. Ginger Brute dies to like everything they have in their deck, but 
it could be a nice thing for Saga to get if they decide that they're trying to stabilize by gumming up the board and like blowing up Shadow Spear or something. So it's like a backup Shadow Spear effect essentially. And I think this is fine. If we see Alpine Moon out of their deck, it won't be unexpected. I don't think Urza Sagas are going to be able to carry us like they did last game, at least most likely if they keep a reasonable hand. Alright, speaking of Urza Sagas, I guess, I mean this hand's fine. I guess we check and see if they actually have Alpine Moon. They're on a mulligan. Let's keep it. We still have Relic, and we have kind of something to do, and we have blue mana if they get rid of uh, our Sagas with Alpine Moon. If they do do that, of course that sucks for us, but... The Inquisition. That's probably going to get either Drum or Relic. Probably Relic. But we'll see, I guess. If they get Drum, that makes me think that they don't have Alpine Moon. They get Drum. We draw Cranial Plating. Let's play Silver Bluff Bridge, play Memnite. Say go. Let's see if we get blown out by an Alpine Moon, getting rid of two of the cards in our hand. I'd like to at least get a little bit of mana out of these Urza Sagas. Opponent plays Graven Cairns. Plays... Ragavan, Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle on Saga, I assume. Yep, there's a Pithing Needle. Alright, so we're not as upset as we would be with the other possible setup. Do I want to play Cranial Plating or Relic? I suppose I want to get the Relic down early. Right? To keep their graveyard in check, keep them off of Delirium, make it harder for them to kill Sojourner's Companion. Pass the turn. If they attack in with Ragavan, I will 100% block with Memnite. I'm not very attached to the Memnite right now. And I'd love for the stupid monkey to be gone. One, two, three, four, five, six. We don't have quite enough to play Sojourner's Companion if we don't draw like a Darksteel Citadel here. Getting to tutor with Urza Saga might just be enough here. Opponent ditch to hit it Sugu consumes all. Maybe because they have a bunch of those. Uh, maybe because they would blow up a bunch of their permanents and we have the welding jar, but I'm still wary of that. Okay, we did draw a dark steel set at all. That means Sojourner's Companion can come down at least. Let's go ahead and exile that. Keep them off of Delirium. Play Darksteel Citadel. Play Cranial Plating. Play Companion. Pass the turn. I love how dumpy he looks. He has such a large mouth. My god. It's so fun to play. Mirror Enforcers in a competitive modern deck. It's very satisfying. Opponent plays Terminate. We can't regenerate from that, so that's that. Opponent has one card in their hand. They're attacking in with Ragavan and Seasoned Pyromancer. We block the stupid monkey. Are they going to use a kill spell to keep the monkey alive? They fetched. Oh, they give it first strike. That makes sense. That was dumb of me.
I wish I knew how to read. All right. That resolves, unfortunately. Urza's Saga is going to tutor for us. We're going to make a mana. And we're going to do the thing that I mentioned earlier and get Ginger Brute. Play Urza's Saga. Planning to turn this one into a dorky creature as well. Just later. Equip up Ginger Brute. Make you exile a card. Make Ginger Brute unblockable. Go to combat for seven. And we have a Welding Jar to keep Ginger Brute alive. They only have one card in their hand. So we might just be able to kill them with, with uh, just the Ginger Brute. But we have another Urza Saga to tutor for a creature. And we have a Relic that we can pop to draw a card. Opponent attacks for five. Trying to race us. To find a welding jar. I wish I had that welding jar. They play the welding jar. Reasonable. They play Thoughtseize. Haha. -ha. No cards in hand. Alright, I'm gonna pop Relic to see what we draw. It doesn't actually reduce our clock since 7 and 6 are pretty much the same thing against the 10. Treasure Vault, not what we wanted to draw. Frogmite is what we wanted to draw. Go to combat. Attack with the Gingerbread Man. Do you have removal? They have a terminate. Very sad. Alright, let's cranial plating up. Frogmite. See what our opponent draws this turn. We get to tutor again with Urza's Saga. We can get either a creature or a utility artifact, which is probably Shadow Spear in this scenario. They're attacking with a Ragavan, so they're not leaving up the Shinka thing. Thought Monitor. I wanted to draw that. They could actually cast it too with their treasure tokens. That's pretty scary. They draw a couple cards. Yup, yup. Opponent plays Obsidian Charmaw. That can blow up our Urza's Saga. What a cruel world we live in. Alright. We draw Ornithopter. Not exactly what we wanted. Let's play Treasure Vault. Let's play... Let's see. If we get in with Frogmite, they block with... An elemental token, I assume. I think we have to play it safe and just play Ornithopter. And equip Cranial Plating to it. So it can block and kill Charmaw. But we're pretty much just hunting for a Thought Monitor of our own now. Yeah, our opponent having multiple terminates was very unfortunate for us this game. Let's... I think I want to block the monkey and regenerate when they... Grant first strike. So we at least hopefully can prevent more Ragavan triggers. Because if they hit more of our thought monitors, I'm going to get very sad. That could open us up to removal on our Ornithopter or Cranial Plating, unfortunately, but I think that's just what we have to do. Oh, fuck. Frogmite gets removed from combat. 
Okay, we drew a thought cast. That's nice, at least. Let's see what we draw with that. We draw another ornithopter. Okay. Let's go to combat. <clears throat> so they can block with thought monitor and regenerate it. Let's attack with Ornithopter. That's probably what they're going to do. Let's see if they forget that their Urborg is giving us black fixing for cranial plating. Play Misfall Bridge. Play Ornithopter. Equip up Ornithopter. Pass the turn. Alright, I'm going to let them get in with Ragavan this turn, I'm pretty sure. They Fatal Push our Ornithopter, that's fine. Two cards in our opponent's hand. They Terminate our other creature. Very sad. They have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage. So, we're dead. Very sad. Alright. We didn't really see Graveyard Matters stuff. So I don't think I want Tormod's Crypt anymore. And I think... I still think Edge Champion's good. I think I want Mirror Enforcer back again. And I think I might actually cut Relic for it, or at least one of them. Just because we didn't see any, any DRCs or anything that cares about their graveyard there. And just having a 4-4 as a way to get around the majority of their removal or have more creatures on board to survive uh, Terminates would be really nice. I will play first. This hand's reasonable. Uh, if they have an, an Alpine Moon, of course we're sad. But we can get Thought Monitor down pretty quickly even if they Alpine Moon us, I think. And we have the one relic, we have a cranial plating for a clock, we have some dudes, let's keep it. Hopefully we can get an early thought monitor and just pull ahead of them. Play Silver Bluff Bridge, pass the turn. They could also just thought seize the thought monitor and then we'll be a little bit sad about it, but... We get cranial plating or relic down next turn, and then we can see what we, where we go from there. Alright, opponent plays Ragavan. Let's play Saga. Okay. Play Memnite. Play Ornithopter. Play Relic. Play Thoughtcasts. Got some extra cards now. Alright, so we found lands. Which is what we wanted as long as we're keeping the Saga at the very least. If our opponent plays a land and goes to combat, I think I... I mean, I think no matter what, I just put this Memnite in front of Ragavan. Uh, if they give Ragavan first strike, that doesn't hurt my feelings so much because it at least taps their lands for this turn. And then that means that they're not playing. Yeah, that at least means that they're not playing something to disrupt our saga or any of our other stuff. Get rid of your land just in case it matters. I am glad that I have the one relic at the very least, just because they could randomly have like a Kroxa or something that really blows me out from the graveyard. And then I'd be very sad. I'm fine with dedicating a Memnite to stopping that Ragavan trigger. Okay, we found another Memnite too, that makes it even better. Saga ticks up, we will play Treasure Vault, we will play a new Memnite. I assume they have proper removal for the Saga, for the first uh, Construct token at least, but we'll see about going further from there. Memnite and Ornithopter are also very, very nice against uh, Liliana, but we gotta watch out for the Hidetsugu Saga. Obsidian Charma. Okay, that could blow up Urza's Saga, I assume is what they're gonna do with it at least. But we still get a boy out of it if they do that. Alright. That's fine. I wonder if they're not playing Alpine Moon. Since we've seen Charma twice, they might have two of them. Interesting. 
Alright, so we've found Frogmite. We're gonna play that. I think I just play Thought Monitor now and let Cranial Plating wait. Because I'm getting in with the Construct token here no matter what. Misfault Bridge. Uh, do I just play out Needle? I think I want to wait on it instead. Especially since we saw a Hedetsugu consumes all last game. I'd rather keep a couple artifacts in hand. They probably cut Lily of the Veil. At least I would have if I were them. Alright, they trade for Ragavan. They are more incentivized than ever to play Hidetsugu Consumes All. But we still get to keep our Frogmite and our Thought Monitor, and we get to cantrip with Relic, so we're really just losing these if they do that. And then we don't care about our graveyard after it gets exiled, of course. Yep, okay. Let's draw a card with Relic. Opponent, do you get in? Opponent does not get in. Well, we're gonna attack with something with cranial plating on it for sure. I think I want to play Lily of play Needle on Lily of the Veil now. Because it's significantly better now that we have less creatures in play. And let's make them block Frogmite if they're going to block anything and leave Thought Monitor back. So we keep our flyer. Cool, cool. Alright, Graveyards get exiled again. We would like to top deck something good. Most of our cards are pretty decent top decks now because we can play Thought Monitor, Thought Cast really easily, and they we haven't seen anything particularly good against Saga yet, as far as things that insta kill it. I guess they could have more dragons, maybe. The K command, that's sad. Alright, now we definitely want a top deck. Eh, it's a decent top deck. Alright. Play Drum. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play Companion. Sega. Seven artifacts. Our opponent has a pretty full hand, though, is the issue. And they're flipping their Saga. So we need to find some draw spells so we can reestablish a board, I think. Season Pyromancer. Definitely need to reestablish a board. <laughs> see what our opponent loots. Opponent gets rid of Fatal Push, Blood Crypt. Makes sense. Passes. We draw Mim Knight. Let's run out Mim Knight. Pass the turn. Running out Mim Knight might have been wrong in case they have a K command and they lock us out of a draw step with it, but... I think it's a bit more likely that they randomly have like a Thought Seize or something that we turn on with it. Opponent plays a Charmaw. I assume they're targeting Treasure Vault because it's the one that makes sense to target. We're just going to pop it in response though. And come on, blue spells off the top, preferably multiple of them all in a row. Would be very nice. Ornithopter, not a blue spell. Let's pass. Leaving Ornithopter in hand so that we can still draw a card despite a Coligan's command. Text for four in the air makes sense. Hmm. 
We're at 16, they're at 15. They have far more cards than we do right now. Opponent plays a seasoned pyromancer. Oh boy. Discards a Charma and a Lightning Bolt. So we've seen three Obsidian Charmas this game. I wonder if that's all of them. We draw a Mirror Enforcer. Well, let's go to combat. Attack for four with so Well, if we attack for four with Sojourner's Companion, it basically just lets them get more boys with their seasoned Pyromancers dying and still trade for our Companion. So that doesn't seem like a good deal. I think we just want to leave it back and gum up the board some more. So we have more chances to draw outs. Because really we need to draw, like, Thought Monitor into Urza's Saga, or Thought Monitor into Cranial Plating, or something like that. Because that could help us actually stabilize and turn back around. We draw Springleaf Drum. I think that means that we cast Ornithopter and pass. Keep the board gummed up. We're in the danger zone just about life-wise. We're about to be at 8, most likely. I don't really want to chump block Obsidian Charma yet. I'd rather see if I draw Cranial Plating as a way to get rid of it. Alright, we go to 8. Alright, come on, heart of the cards. Good top deck, please. Put to place Pithing Needle. Naming. They have a few good picks. They name Cranial Plating. Ugh. Alright, we draw. Shadow Spear. Pretty decent top deck. Okay. Let's play Shadow Spear. I think that means we get in with Mirror Enforcer or Sojourner's Companion, whichever one we equip it to. Equip up the Mirror Enforcer. Attack for five. That way we can gain back some life at the very least. Block with Season Pyromancer and a bunch of tokens. I'm fine with that. That recovers us from a Charma attack plus a little bit. And then we can put it on Sojourner's Companion. Guess it doesn't matter what color. Pass the turn. Alright, 13 to 14 currently. Opponent has a den of the bugbear. They get back some tokens with Season Pyromancer, makes sense. Charma gets in for four, not ready to dedicate Ornithopter to it yet. Come on, good top deck. Thought cast. Alright, let's start. More blue spells, please. That's not more blue spells. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> huh. Okay, so our opponent has a Den of the Bugbear, Seasoned Pyromancer, two elemental tokens, and Vessel of the All Consuming that could attack. Or, or, and that could block this uh, Sojourner's Companion. <sighs> so if I attacked into their board, what did they do? I assume they leave their vessel because they don't want it to die and they block with Season Pyromancer or Token Token Den of the Bugbear. Or Season Pyromancer 1 Token and Den of the Bugbear. So it's not really worth doing that yet. 
it might be decent to just move it over to Ornithopter and plan on chump blocking the Charmaw this turn. Try to buy another turn. Let's play Darksteel Citadel. Play Springleaf Drum. Oy. Cranial plating no longer being a good top deck definitely hurts. We're running out of time to get like an Urza's Saga 2. We could gain ourselves a bit of life, I guess, to try to uh, ugh, to try to get enough time for uh, Saga to matter. Another season Pyromancer. Terrible news. Opponent discards. Thought sees draws two cards. What did they get? They got a terminate. I think that just makes us dead. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're dead. Okay, well, GG's. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, final round with Affinity in Modern. Let's see if we can get the three, two. Pretty sure we should be able to do that. Playing against the Yorion deck, this hand is... It plays an Urza Saga early, but other than that, it's pretty abysmal. Uh... I mean, yeah, I think we just got a mulligan up. Alright, this one has more sagas. Let's keep, get rid of an ornithopter. Play citadel, relic, memnite, go. Opponent plays Windswept Teeth, we will exile it. Gets a forest. Plays Abundant Growth, looks like... Probably just generic Yorion Pile currently. We draw Misfault Bridge, let's play Saga. Get in for one. Pass the turn, see if we get Spreading Seized. Relic likely doesn't do much in this matchup. They play Abundant Growth. That's fine. So I think I'm probably going to cash in Relic and see if I can draw an untapped land that is not a Saga. But it plays Ragavan. Let's draw a card. We draw Cranial Plating. We draw Mirror Enforcer. Okay. We can't get Mirror Enforcer down this turn. What we can do is... Play the other Saga. Play Ornithopter. Pass the turn. I'd like to make it as hard as possible for them to get ramp off of this Ragavan. Because I assume they're going to be kind of reliant on it. They cast Expressive Iteration. I always welcome my opponent playing an expressive iteration early in the game because I would like them to use their two mana digging for land drops or cards rather than doing something on board or responding to anything that I've done. Alright, let's make a boy with Urza's Saga. We draw an Ornithopter. Triggers on the stack. Let's... Float a mana with the older one. Do we want Springleaf Drum or Shadow Spear? We 
We're not going to be able to get Cranial Plating down this turn either way. But we will have Blue Mana for next turn. Let's get Shadow Spear in case they get blockers somehow or another. That trigger resolves. Play Ornithopter. Activate the Saga. Free Mirror Enforcer. Miss Vault Bridge. Attack for 10. Opponent chump blocks. They do not have a solitude this turn. Always nice to see. See what our opponent does. Abundant growth. Spinning the wheels. They have perfect mana. Just about. They play it to fairy. They bounce a construct. We draw thought casts. All right. Activate Urza's Saga. Search with Urza's Saga. Let's get Springleaf Drum. Let's Thought Cast. We're already attacking for 15 this turn. But now we can do it while also pressuring to Fairy for one. So if they don't have a Solitude, they're super dead. And to ferry for one. And if they do have a solitude, at least to ferry is gone and we still have quite a board. I'm gonna play solitude. Get rid of the construct, that's fine. They're gonna take four down to eleven. To ferry dies. We still have a shadow spear, which doesn't seem very relevant currently, but if they randomly get a bunch of tokens, it could be. And we have a cranial plating that makes a second lethal threat on board. So it means they have to likely solitude two things. Or prismatic in this and then solitude whatever we cranial plating. And if we draw a land, we can. If we draw an untapped land, we can play cranial plating, equip it, and then re equip it after they do the solitude thing. <laughs> Alright, so they did find a solitude. That's probably going to remove our 11-11. Yeah, they exile the Yorion. Play Solitude. Our opponent's so nice, they keep gaining us life. Solitude dies. They have mismatched Solitudes. Shame on them. Alright, what are the chances the Yorion deck found three Solitudes? <laughs> in the top uh, handful of cards of their deck. I don't think it's very likely. Go to combat. Hooray! All right. Yorion, Yorion, Yorion. We get Etch Champion. We get Pithing Needle. And we get a bunch of metallic rebukes. Cutting. Nettle Sis, because we brought an Etch Champion. Mirror Enforcer, Mirror Enforcer. <sighs> Probably some amount of welding jars. I think that they're more on the elementally blinky side of things than the controlly uh, supreme verdicty side of things. Otherwise, I prefer keeping in the welding jars, but I think we can cut at least one because they probably have mostly exile removal, and then cut both the relics. Try it like that. I think that looks fine. I mean, realistically, it's probably not worth agonizing over. Uh, it's unlikely that changing the count of something in your deck by one is going to do anything in a particular game, but... I think we got a mulligan this. It could be kind of fast if we drew, like, a thought cast, but... We only have one creature. Even though we have cranial plating, they can just remove it pretty easily. Let's mull again. All right, Mistfall Bridge, Urza Saga, Metallic Rebuke. We're gonna keep this. Get rid of the cranial plating. So, game two and three, 
they're more likely to have answers for Urza Saga, so it's nice we have Metallic Rebuke. Hopefully we can turn it on before they have the chance to, and we can. So let's go Mistfall Bridge, go. So next turn we can go Urza Saga, Ornithopter in some order, and if they let us resolve the Saga trigger before they March of Otherworldly light it, we can protect it with a Metallic Rebuke. And that would be nice. Found another Metallic Rebuke. Alright, let's play Ornithopter, and if they don't do anything, I'm going to cycle Sojourner's Companion, get an Artifact Land. Pass the turn. Pun of Cracks. Readying the Metallic Rebuke. Opponent. Plays Ice Fang Codal. I don't care about that card. Opponent draws a card. I wish we had actual Baleful Strix in the format. That would be really sweet. I'd like to try to play... I'd like to try to build a, uh, like, blue-black Tesserator deck in Modern with uh, Baleful Strix and a bunch of forces, since Baleful Strix is blue. Alright, Teferi. Let's counter that. Because it turns off our counters anyway, and if we don't, they can just bounce one of our lands, and it basically counters the Urza Saga if they bounce our Misfall Bridge. Alright, Teferi down. We draw Pithing Needle. Urza Saga ticks up. <sighs> Play Saga. I don't like having both of them. Especially since I still think I'm going to have to protect at least one of them with Metallic Rebuke here. But I guess we'll see what happens. I also don't like that we drew Pithing Needle because I find against Yorion decks more often than not, instead of like naming Teferi or Ren and Six or something obvious, I like to pop Saga and sometimes they will have left a uh, fetch land in play. Opponent plays Omnom. Do we counter Omnom? I think we do. It's high priority enough, I think. This lets them, them get in for an extra one, but it plays around, like, I guess a random daze or something. If they happen to have that, I don't care about my life total as much, though. And they don't attack anyway, so that's fine. We draw a Sojourner's Companion. Alright. So we didn't get any tokens from the first Saga. But. We can get a Springleaf Drum here. And we already have Floating Mana. Which means I'm probably cycling the Sojourner's Companion to get a Darksteel Citadel. I might just uh, play Pith and Needle on Teferi, actually, instead. Because Teferi bouncing... our Constructs would be very annoying. Yeah, I think I want to do that. It's a fairy time raveler now that I don't have any counter spells in my hand anyway. Pass the turn. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed that I'm two and two right now. I'd really like to get a okay, Pound of Finds a Ren and Six. I would really, really like to get a 5-0 on camera since I haven't done that on my YouTube channel at all yet. Uh, I've got four ones with Affinity on camera before anyway, and I know you guys believe that I can do it, but I don't know. I don't know if it's like just bad luck or if I'm just worse at playing when I'm trying to talk over it or something. Pen goes to combat, does nothing. If we find another counter spell for the Yorion, that would be beautiful. If not, I'm still not very scared of it since it only draws a card right now. We found an Aether Spell Bomb that I'm not really going to do anything with yet. Let's make another boy. And I think I just pressure in at Renin 6. 
We have six artifacts currently. Let's get a Springleaf Drum. They could have Solitude in their hand, so let's just go ahead and play out the shit before we get disrupted. It looks like they have Solitude in their hand, most likely. That's probably why they're thinking about it, because if they let us resolve Sojourner's Companion, they get to, uh, they make us gain more life than we otherwise would have. I'm not going to play the Aether Spell Bomb yet, because it might make them think that we have a counter spell. Second main phase I am going to play it, though, because I'd rather go ahead and get into play. And then next turn I have enough mana to play Etch Champion, or if I draw an untapped land, Etch Champion plus activate Aether Spell Bomb. What you got, opponent? Opponent doesn't not attack. We draw the Darksteel Citadel. So we do get to do the Etch Champion thing. Go to combat. Attack with everything that has power. Our opponent does not have Death Touch on their Kotal yet. Not that it would change anything realistically for me. They could totally have a Solitude here. They apparently don't. Maybe they do. They just decided not to block with it. Or, yeah. Okay. This means Etch Champion gets to resolve at least. Opponent goes to seven. I still am pretty sure that they're not playing a board wipey deck. And we still have Aether Spellbomb just in case. What you got, opponent? Expressive iteration. Means they don't have something yet. They're digging for it. Finds a counter spell that doesn't do anything. Plays an abundant growth. That's fine. Plays Sacred Foundry. Plays Prismatic Ending. Okay. Opponent passes. We will go to combat, attack with the boys that have power. If our opponent ephemerates their solitude, we will bounce their solitude to their hand. They'll get to activate it again still, but they won't get the ephemerate shenanigans. Okay. Opponent's at four. And what you got, opponent? Opponent plays Fury. Okay. I'm going to... Would I rather rescue my Sojourner's Companion, or... make it to where they possibly die. I think I'll let it resolve. Opponent taps a white. I wonder if they actually have ephemerate or if they're faking it. Either way, Etch Champion kills them over the next two turns. Let's play Silver Bluff, go to combat. Attack, attack. I 
Yeah, I think I just bounce the Fury and make them have the Ephemerate. Our opponent tapping for white there was definitely... It was... It's possible it was a mistake, but it was probably just like a genius move, I think. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Got the 3-2. Pretty satisfied with it. Um, like I said, even though, of course, I haven't got one on camera, with exactly this affinity list or within like one or two cards of it, I've been getting really good results. I've gotten nine five o's so far over the last couple of weeks playing with it. Uh... It feels really nice to be playing with a bunch of, essentially, cards that dominated Popper for a little bit. <laughs> and doing well in Modern with them. Uh, let's open up our pack and see what we got. Cruel Ultimatum, hell yeah. I wonder if Cruel Ultimatum can still do things as like a meme deck in Modern. Maybe something to explore in the near future. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Shoe Nice again. Well, basically, go subscribe to Tez's YouTube channel. And for those who made it to the end of the video, thank you.